All right, so I did my presentation on sliding around loops, and the design of the project was a small steel ball with a quarter inch diameter traveling around a slide with a loop in it, and then the second part of my project was to get it to go around two loops. And the slide that I used was a vinyl tube, and then, um, so given the radius of the loop and the distance that the ball travels, the goal was to find the minimum initial height needed to achieve a minimum velocity so that the ball will be able to travel around the loops. So first I found the coefficient of kinetic friction. I used conservation of energy and derived a formula for mu k and then so I tested it out experimentally. I used the height of 0 0.4064 meters, the distance of 0.889 meters, and then an angle of 63 degrees. And then I timed the velocity of the ball, and I got 2.14 meters per second. And then I used that to calculate mu k, and I got 1.196. So for the theoretical experiment with one loop, I used conservation of energy again, and I started with potential energy initial equals kinetic energy linear final plus kinetic energy rotational final plus the waste heat from point A to point B, and I derived a formula for the first velocity, which was the square root of 10 over 7 times g times h1 minus mu k times the distance. And then I set the gravitational force equal to the centripetal force. So when the ball is at the top of the loop, so then I calculated, calculated a formula for the tangential velocity when the ball is at the top of the loop. And then I used conservation of energy again from the bottom of the loop, from when the ball is at the bottom of the loop to when the ball is at the top of the loop, and then calculated the height by substituting the two formulas that I got for the velocity at point B and then the velocity at point C, and I got that the height should be 27 over 20 times the height of the loop, which is the diameter of the loop, plus mu k times the distance that the ball travels from the top, the starting point to point C. And then I use the height of 0 0.2032 meters for the diameter of the loop, and then the distance that the ball traveled was 1.0668 meters and then I used mu k of 0.196 and I calculated the theoretical minimum minimum height is 0.483 meters and then experimentally I found that the minimum height that the ball could travel around the loop was 0.4826 meters and which is really really close so I got an error of point one seven percent so I used conservation of energy for the theoretical experiment with two loops from point A to point B, which is the top of the first loop to the top of the second loop. And I used the derivation that I got for the tangential velocity from the first part of the experiment. And I substituted that for the initial velocity from at point A. And then I 
derived a formula for the velocity at point B, which was square root of negative 13 over 14 G times H2, which is the diameter of the loop. Then I used conservation of energy again from point A at the top of the, the slide, the starting point, to point B, which is the top of the second loop. And I used conservation of energy to derive a formula for the initial starting height. And I um, plugged in the derivations that I got for the velocity from the previous slide. And I got that the height should be 15 over 28 times h2 plus mu k times the distance that the ball travels. And then I used the diameter of the loop h2 of 0 0.2032 meters, a distance of 2.413 meters, and mu k of 0.196 and got that the minimum height should be 0.582 meters, theoretically. And experimentally, the lowest height that I got that the ball could travel around both loops was 0.635 meters, giving me an error of So my analysis of the experiment and the project was that the error turned out really small. So, and it shows that the experiment was successfully able to get the steel ball over the one and two loops and the theoretical equations worked out and that the error most likely came from the shape of the clear tube, which is the the vinyl tube, because um, I had... A little bit of trouble bending it but I used zip ties and duct tape to hold it in place and I did originally want to try to get the ball around multiple loops but the clear tube wasn't long enough so I used two loops and realistically the experiment relates to roller coasters with loops in them because they rely on centripetal force to keep the cars on track and the loops in the roller coasters were originally designed as a complete circle which is like my experiment, but then due to intense gravitational forces causing neck injuries, most modern roller coasters use a teardrop shape instead for less impact on the neck. <laughs>